So here we are. I'm Kerry Fink on behalf of Helping Seniors of Brevard and uh, Joe Steckler, our president and founder, and Kim Bernard, our education specialist. And we're so excited to be here one week, one week to the car raffle. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Hey, guys. Guys. What? So uh, here we are at the American Muscle Car Museum. And You know, I was expecting ice cream, but this might be a little better. <laughs> I love the idea of taking the uh, 2020 Chevrolet Camaro, the 2020 Mazda Miata convertible, the 2020 Kia Sportage, or the 2020 Dodge Challenger out for ice cream. Um, okay. Maybe the Miata. Okay. Oh, I don't know. It's a good ice cream eating car? Um, anything's a good ice cream eating <laughs> car. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here to talk about the Helping Seniors Car Raffle, which happens here one week from tonight in one week from tonight somebody's going to pick up keys to a brand new car and so uh, we are so fortunate to be standing here with ed didick from the american M muscle car museum and you have we're, we're going to start where we left off our last tour we're gonna we're down on uh, chevrolet camaro row and you've got some amazing uh, we were really enjoying the tour so let's continue Oh, absolutely. And thank you again for having us. Appreciate everyone here today on that. As you got to see, we see uh, you have a lot of memorabilia in here. This is actually a good humor ice cream cart. And as you look around, there's, we have an antique refrigerator that's 1905 and a lot of the antique gas pumps. So as I said, like the ladies have said, there's something in here for everybody. And we're going to go ahead and continue with the, some of the stories of the cars. Uh, right here, we have a 1969 in Fathom Green a 1970 and Mousselon Blue, and we'll come back to that name, a 1994 and a 1990, excuse me, 1984 and a 1987, and it kind of shows you four generations of Camaros. The one I want to talk about here for just a minute is a 1970 Z28 Coupe. This is a gorgeous car. The name of this color is actually Mousselon Blue, and then the Mousselon, the straight, and the 24 Hours of Le Mans, that is the straight on the back side of it. And if I can have you come up here. Carrie, I'm actually going to have you hold this a second. All right. The Franklin Mint came out and photographed and measured this car, and this is the actual car for it that they used for it. Now, how did they pay us for doing this? We got three models of the car. <laughs> so, but no, this is a gorgeously restored car. We'll go ahead and set that back on there. And this was an all new design that they had from 1969. This had the 350 LT1 motor in it. And in my opinion, this is the most gorgeous Camaro we have in the collection right here. You come to the Nevada Silver in the 71. And here again, like we talked about the 1984. And as the generations progressed, we have the 1997 white with the orange stripes. We come to the other side of the aisle and we have a Le Mans Blue 1969 Camaro. This is actually Uno, or named Uno, and the reason why, this was Don Yanko's first car that he had produced in 1969, and this was his test mule. I'm gonna let you look under the hood for just a moment. Uh, one thing we are very, very proud of is all the cars are kept in running and driving condition, which takes a lot of work, and a little later in the segment, we're gonna talk about the maintenance shop. As we come down the aisle, we actually have five of the 69 Yanko Camaros. We have a Olympic Gold. Coming to the next one, we have Hugger Orange. And then we have a Dove White. We actually have one in Daytona Yellow. It's out in the maintenance shop, what makes up the five. You come down to the 1969 Garnet Red. And we have the Butternut Yellow. I'm gonna have Ashley come back here for just a moment. This is a 1969 Chevelle. This is done in Le Mans Blue. This is a survivor car. What we mean by that is this has not been restored. This was a race car. The stripes on the side, Don Yanko's daughters put the stripes on the side and on the hood, and you can see there's a slight overlap here. When they restored the cars, they would actually copy that. This is a restored car here. How much do you think they got to put the stripes on the car back in 1969? So he's paying his children? He's paying his children. Uh, Five dollars. You got it, exactly. It's five bucks a car to do the car. Great guess. But no, this is a nice example of an unrestored car here. 
we'll go ahead and go out to the next ones here. We come down the aisle a little bit. We have a 69 Yanko Nova and a 396. That is in a special order color. And then we go to the Deuce cars or the small block cars and the Fathom Blue, the Gobi Beige, and then the Candy Apple Red. In the corner we have an SS396 car. That is a special to order paint. It's a Corvette Bronze. That's a gorgeous car. And then here again as we come around the corner, you can see this dates us a little bit because Carrie probably had one of these Schwinn bicycles. This is our collection of Schwins. These are from 1968 to 1973. And I actually had one as a kid, so that tells you about how old I am. But no, as you can see, even just coming down half of one aisle, there is, is plenty to look at and plenty to do. So it's well worth your time to come out here. Pictures just do not do the place justice. I have talked about this car, Ed, right here, uh, because I thought this one was fascinating, a Chevrolet Vega. And to me, this was incredible because most of us that remember Chevrolet Vega, they didn't last as long as we might have hoped. Uh, no. But this one is like right off the showroom. It's right off the showroom. And even speaking of that, I grew up in rural Nebraska. And I had a 72 Vega wagon that I used just to run around the farm and see how many things I could destroy with it. <laughs> but this one here in uh, 71 and 72, Don Yanko had planned on turbocharging these Vegas. Oh, wow. What he did not understand is he had to have at least one car tested with 50,000 miles on it to allow him to do that to make it sell it as a production car. So the turbocharging kit became an over-the-counter item. Yeah. Uh, this is a very rare car and it's one of the last of the 50 known to exist. There's actually one of the cam backs or the station wagon with the slope back to it in Iowa. But as you can see just on the windshield, there's, it's been featured in multiple magazines and books. So it is a very rare car. Uh, next to us, the only Trans Am that Don Yanko converted is a 75 Trans Am. And here again, this is where I call it the, the kids puffing their chests out. The kid in high school, his dad had owned a Pontiac dealer. And we had a kid in high school that dad owned a Chevrolet dealer. So he took the Pontiac over to Yanko Chevrolet and got it converted. And then we have one of the last generations of the Don Yankos in the 1981. This is a Turbo Z. Uh, they had produced 19 of these. And unfortunately, Don sold his dealership in 82 and was killed in a plane crash in 87. Um, his daughter, Lynn, worked with SV Engineering. And this is actually a 2012. This was her personal car that we see in the Victory Red. And as you see the 2016 on top, 2015, and then 2017 Corvette to some of the continuations of the Yanko cars. This is one of the cars here. We don't let people get into too many of the cars for various reasons, but this is one when we have kids tours, we allow them to sit in a Dale Earnhardt truck. We've got a big kid right here. So hop on in. It's not the most comfortable thing to get in but she makes the truck look good. I'm from Georgia, so is Dale. <laughs> Perfect. Now, and that's something, even if a, a kid is not a car person, you can see them get in the car and they really enjoy it. What we do notice is the young ladies that get in the car, they don't look at the dash, they look at the rear view mirror, they look at how they look. The boys are in there pulling on the levers and seeing what... <laughs> okay, we'll come back to her, we'll just leave her in there. And then here again, here's some of the memorabilia as we have some of the coin operated rides. And then we come to some of our Dale Earnhardt tribute cars in the Lumina, the Corvette. That looks like she snuck out of the car. And then we have a 2001 Chevrolet Intimidator. Um, this is one where they had planned on building a hundred of these cars. Unfortunately, this is the time that Dale was killed in racing. So they produced a total of 83 of these cars, and this is number 66. And the large Chevrolet neon sign is actually off an original Chevrolet dealership. And you can see the gas pumps behind you. That's something I like to ask the young people that come on tours. You know, where do you put the debit card? How do you work the machine and everything else? As we come around here, here is something you don't see a lot of, but this is, in a sense, dear to me, coming from rural Nebraska, a 1957 international pickup. And we're going to come down this row a little bit here. We have a 1957 M100 Mercury truck. These were produced in Canada, and how they made it through there to the United States was through the oil fields in North Dakota and South Dakota. 
Uh, this car has, I believe, four options on it, and one of the options is actually a heater, which coming out of Canada, I hope they have one. But I mean, this is very basic, uh, and next to it is a 1957 Mercury Monterey. I mean, to me, you look at the stunning colors of this, the pastels, this really shows of the era at the time, the large front bumper on it. And then we come to the, it's more of the Mercury collection, we have a Mercury Cyclone. And we have our Dan Gurney car. They actually produced a Kale Yarbrough car also. The Kale Yarbrough had a red interior with a red top. The Dan Gurney car had the blue interior with the blue top. And then we come to the 1970 Cyclone Spoiler. This is a Super Cobra Trek, Super Cobra Jet 429 drag pack car. This has the original Marty report and the original build sheet with the car. And here again, these are some of the, the true muscle cars as they were getting towards the end of the 69s and 70s. Uh, the 1970 Trino here, this is called the bright gold metallic. That is a true tire burner. And next to it, we have a 1970 Trino GT, this is also a 429 car. And then we have something called a Cobra Twister. And they were trying to come up with a gimmick and this was actually produced at the Kansas City plant. Here again, you got Tornado Alley coming through. And this was one of 90 Torino Twisters built. We jump to a little more modern, where we have a 2002 Ford T-Bird. This has 16 original miles on it. And coming down the road a little farther, for those of you who don't know, Carroll Shelby did work with Dodge for quite a bit. This is some of the Dodge products in the 1989 Dodge, and next to it's a 1983 Dodge Charger, which is quite a bit different from the 1970 Dodge Charger. And once again, we've lost about half our team, but that's okay, because they're very interested in the cars. Um, here's, where we, yeah. here's where we start the Shelby bro. We have a 1966 Shelby GT350 Fastback in Candy Apple Red. This car was actually purchased brand new. And this was from an airman at, uh, I'm trying to think, what was the, uh, in Sanford Air Base? Gary, do you know? There was an air base at Sanford at the time. And he, he was stationed there and he had purchased the car. We come down to a 1967 Wimbledon White GT350. This is actually an export car, and this is one of the cars that has a really unique story. This was shown at the Fair of Seville in Spain, and to have this in the country, they had to have a rear window wiper. So it still has the rear window wiper provision, and in the dash, the speedometer's done in the kilometers, and the dash is written in, you know, in foreign language. We have the dark moss green, and then we have the Brittany blue. And it just seems like it's Mustang after Mustang, but they are some incredible cars. Here's one in a Raven Black, 1968. And then we go to a 1968 convertible in a dark moss green. And on the end cap here, this is a 1968 in a sunlit gold. This was purchased brand new by Colonel Edward Littlejohn III. And who is that? At the time, he was the US Navy Top Gun Commander and he was stationed in California, so this actually has air conditioning on it. And if you look, it has some of the Marty Report right down on the end there. Well, let's move on down to Dodge Row, and then we'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll jump over here to Dodge Row. We'll talk a little bit about Dodge, and then we're gonna talk about the Dodge versus Chevy Challenge. Absolutely. As we come by, you see the eight ball race car that was raced in 67 and 68. That's a lot of fun to drive that car. And we come down to some of the memorabilia. And the SO Tigers and the Power Lube Tiger. This is actually our Burt Reynolds Trans Am that we purchased for Trans Am Worldwide. Have Burt Reynolds sign it in the dash. It's a lot of fun on that car. We're going to come by our Pontiacs right here, and as we come by the Pontiacs, we're going to get ready to the Dodge Row. We've got a great story on this 72 Trans Am. This Trans Am here was actually, we found this car in Texas, and it is one of the only ones painted in Adriatic Blue that year out of the factory, which is a Code 24, because the factory executive wanted it that way. And we found this where they were using the car to herd cattle in Texas. So and needless to say, the front spoiler and everything was 
not there and it was it was a little rough shape but it was not rusty at all let's come on down to the dodge cars we start out with a grocery getter in a 1966 Plymouth satellite this is a 426 Hemi car then we go to the 1970 Excuse me, not to get ahead of myself there. A 1969 Dodge Daytona. This is a 440, 375 horse car. A school teacher bought this car brand new and drove it to school for almost 20 years before they sold it. And then we come to a 1969 GTS, which is a rare car. And Carrie, if you remember me talking about the 83 Charger back there, here's a 1969 Dodge Charger. This is a Hemi 500. And then we have one in the limelight green with a white interior. Uh, we had uh, one of the home builders here in town asked us to bring this to one of their open home shows and we brought this in another car. And we actually felt bad because nobody was paying attention to the home at house and was looking at the cars. You know, but this is the Dodge Row and then we come up here, we see some of the modern Dodges. As we come up on the lift, we come by the Plum Crazy and we come by the Superbirds. And here you have the Plum Crazy and the Hellcat. I think this is great that we've arrived at uh, at Dodge Row, and let's let's call everybody in and let's talk a little bit about the uh, okay. with it, with this. What a great backdrop, right? <laughs> so, 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 Ed, we can't thank you enough for bringing us through the American Muscle Car Museum. Uh, well, it's it, we're competing. We're com <laughs> we're competing with the cars. So. Uh, here we are, and we're standing in the museum, and it's literally one week from tonight that somebody's going to pick up keys to one of those cars in the Helping Seniors Car Raffle. The 2020 Camaro, 2020 Dodge Challenger, 2020 Mazda Miata, or the 2020 uh, Kia Sportage. And so uh, some amazing choices. Somebody's going to have to make a tough decision come, come uh, a week from tonight. You know, but the tough decision is not buying the tickets because it is so awesome. And like just hearing all the stories that Ed's telling us, it's, this is the place to be. And you know, as we're talking about it, this is a fundraiser for the Helping Seniors Organization. One week from tonight, somebody's gonna pick up the keys to uh, one of those beautiful cars that we're talking about. And you have to remember that Joe Steckler, our president and founder, he has uh, worked together for years with AJ Hires of Boniface Hires dealerships to put together car raffles to fund charities in this area. So when you buy your Helping Seniors ticket, you are in fact uh, supporting the work of Helping Seniors, but you are also taking a chance at one of those great cars. But the best part is you get to do what we've been allowed to do today, uh, which is come out and check out this museum. Now, again, I have to make this very clear. We're all wearing our masks. We're trying to be sort of socially, well, you know what happens when we see these cars, we all end up being socially distant because we're all running after cars. <laughs> you know. But the truth of the matter is we can't have a public event on October 10th because the governor's restrictions still, I think, call for no more than 50 people to gather at a time. And especially in care of seniors, we want to do everything the right way, the safe way, and not uh, have any, any uh, uh, challenges with that. However, we're going to be broadcasting live from the basically here all afternoon on the car raffle. We're going to have special guests and some things. You want to talk a little bit about just in general about people and stuff that's going to be happening that afternoon? Sure. We have a lot of the partners of helping seniors that will be here, the providers for senior care, f several different um, kind of local celebrities. So really, really excited about being able to just have short conversations with them. Um, all socially distanced, all scheduled appropriately. Um, but really what the amazing thing is, is you'll get to get a glimpse of this wonderful, wonderful, just simply overwhelming place. And then if you have your car raffle ticket, you get to come again and see it live in person. And I can't tell you the emotions that go along with that. Yeah, you know, and that is really the point. While we can't invite you in on the October 10th date, you will be able to be here via Facebook Live and via YouTube Live. But Mark Pylock, the owner of the American Muscle Car Museum, has graciously said, he said to Joe, he said, Joe, I really want to do something special for the seniors. And he said, I'm willing to, uh, uh, as soon as the governor clears the restrictions and it's safe to do so, 
He said, I'll pick out like three dates on the calendar and anybody who has their Helping Seniors uh, ticket, uh, car raffle ticket, is going to be able to be my guest, take their time, tour the museum. He goes, I'll even spring for soda and pizza and make it, a, make it an amazing time out here. So we are so grateful to Mark and uh, his entire team here, Andrew and Ed and everybody at the American Muscle Car Museum, because you guys have supported us. Uh, this is literally our third year coming back to the American Muscle Car Museum. This is our fourth year of doing the car raffle. I think the first year you guys were still under construction, if I have all of that together. And so uh, you guys have been so generous to host us each year, and we're so excited about being back out here for the event. But you got to get a ticket to be in it. So Jennifer Helen with Seniors Helping Seniors, can I ask you, you know, we never did a proper introduction at the beginning because we all, you scream, I scream, we were all screaming for ice cream. Or in this case, it was a car raffle poster, but still fun. And we were talking about, so we never did proper introductions, but this is Jennifer Helen. Jennifer is on the board of Helping Seniors, uh, senior of Helping Seniors, but also has her own company called seniors helping seniors and people oftentimes get those two like really close but tell us a little bit about uh, seniors helping seniors and then talk a little bit if you don't mind also about how to how uh, how to support the work of helping seniors so I am Seniors Helping Seniors, um, which is a home care company here in Brevard County. And we do in-home care for seniors by seniors. But I am privileged to be the secretary. I sit on the board of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. So I wear both hats, it's a little bit confusing. Uh, but Helping Seniors is really near and dear to my heart because we saw the need, you know, as soon as we opened Seniors Helping Seniors, we got a lot of phone calls not necessarily for what we do, but seniors needing some help. So I'm glad that the senior helpline is there. Kim, our information specialist, can help people with a variety of needs and uh, you know fill those needs, almost act like a case manager. So we really uh, encourage you to get involved, help support helping seniors of Brevard County, buy your tickets so that we can continue the important work that we do. And, you know, in kind of in keeping with that thought, by the way, people say, well, what does helping seniors do? That's a qu question that comes up commonly. And so the most important thing we do is we operate the county's senior information helpline, which is 321-473-7770, 321-473-7770. And that's a number that you can call free of charge from anywhere. And literally it's for Brevard County, but I got to tell you, we get calls all the time from uh, people that are out of state. Maybe they're concerned they have a relative who's in Florida. They can't get to them here because of COVID or things like that. And they just, they're trying to solve problems. And so we get involved and we explain to people, it's a lot more than just a referral line. It's, you know, we wish oftentimes it was that simple. Here's the number, have a nice day. But most of the time it takes Kim an awful lot of work, but the good the good news is that because of Kim's experience and Joe's experience and everybody who's connected to helping seniors, they know who to call to solve a problem. And so I, I also want to introduce our great friends from Hibiscus Court uh, because we didn't get to do that because of the ice cream at the start. So it's Sharice Durham, who's marketing director for Hibiscus Court, a beautiful assisted living and memory care facility right here in Melbourne. And also Ashley Caswell, who is, well, you have been there, but now you're like the corporate director of marketing. and greater scale. It's all good. So, but talk a little bit about helping seniors and, and, and your experience because you guys have really been good friends of helping seniors over the years. Well, we've been able to see the evolution of the helping seniors and the car raffle and the partnership with Joe and with Mark and with everything that comes together. And it really is indicative of the partnership that helping seniors has with so many of our senior care um, agencies and uh, resources. So the importance of seniors helping of, of helping seniors of Brevard, I did a full Jarrett's, um, is that it is the connectivity piece and it is the detail and it is the personalized. And it's so wonderful to be a part of that partnership and the growth of that um, of this event and uh, we are just so pleased to be a part of that and we so appreciate you guys and Ashley you know Brevard is like a giant small town we all know each other we all you know have um, personal favors we know who the person is to go to and it's so great that helping seniors has that hotline where we can share our information you know because it's not just siloed it's everyone's contributing to her knowledge base so that she can help everyone else yeah, it really is truly, you know, we always talk about, you, people oftentimes when they talk about charities, you talk about pay it forward. Because we have this, uh, some statistics just about Brevard County. If you're, a, if you live in Brevard County, one in four of us is over 65. But if you use the AARP definition, 
one out of two of us is over 50 and that qualifies as a senior. So what we always say is if you're in Brevard County, you either are a senior, love and care for a senior, or God willing, you're gonna become a senior. So getting involved in helping seniors is actually a good way to pay it forward uh, because you're doing the right thing. And as you guys know, Brevard County is growing like crazy, right? I mean, I, it's, it's phenomenal the number of people who move to Florida uh, literally ev every week. And the majority of them actually are seniors. And so uh, it's really important that we have this as a resource. So let's talk real quickly about getting Helping Seniors car raffle tickets because the fun part is you get to come here to the museum on the dates that uh, we get to open it up for Helping Seniors. You're going to have a shot at winning the car on October 10th. And of course, you're doing the right thing for Helping Seniors. So who wants to go first about the website to get... All right. <laughs> okay. So if you're watching this video, just click on the link above it or below it and buy your tickets. That's a good answer. You want to take it another step farther with a website? You could go to helpingseniorscarraffle.com. Yes. 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 And what if you want to make a phone call? And you, you know, some people are just more comfortable uh, talking to somebody in person on the phone and say, I'm going to share my credit card information with you so you can get me the tickets. Do you know the Helping Seniors information line? No, because I have it on speed dial. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Good answer. Three, two, one, four, seven, three, seven, 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 zero. Three, two, one, four, seven, three, seven, 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 zero. There's also a couple of other ways you can get tickets. You can go by any of the Boniface Hires dealerships here in Brevard County. Uh, AJ staff is set up with tickets. They will be happy. Number one, you can go check out these amazing cars. Number two, you can get your tickets right there on site. And we're going to talk Dodge versus uh, Chevy before we close out. But you could actually, you guys and you guys are also ticket pickup points. So if you talk Talk to uh, Jennifer at uh, Seniors Helping Seniors or Ashley or Sharice at Hibiscus Court. They can get you set up with tickets. But real quickly, let me tell you, uh, we did the uh, Helping Seniors Dodge versus Chevy Challenge last week. If you didn't get a chance to see it, I want to make sure you go back and you take a look at the video uh, because we sort of set you guys up. We said, okay, we're going to bring the Dodge out and we're going to bring the Chevy out. And for those of you that don't know, there is a... Uh, there's a link on the Helping Seniors Car Raffle.com page, and it's just for fun, but you can vote for which car that you would like to see. And historically, it's almost been a toss-up. Uh, the, the Chevy Camaro has, has had it by like a nose. And you guys, when we started the challenge, you were saying Dodge. You were saying Dodge. You said Chevy. So, but it got a whole lot tougher after that, right, Ashley? Yeah, you know, it's, it's nose and nose. <laughs> so we have to wait till the drive, right? <laughs> I think I need to drive them both again. I, th I think I'm going to have to do, do it again. I, c I could go with that. I, I think Sharice has a great idea because, yeah, I really still like the Challenger, but I could drive the Camaro again. None of those would hurt, hurt anybody's feelings, right? It'd be just great to have keys to a brand new car. But if you're going to get keys to a brand new car one week from tonight, you got to be in it to win it. That means you got to get your tickets. And so just like we talked about, HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com, HelpingSeniorsCarRaffle.com, or you can call 321-473-7770, 321-473-770, or like Ashley said, you can click the link right there. Uh, and Or you can pop by Boniface Hires Dodge or Hibiscus Court or Seniors Helping Seniors and get your tickets. And in all cases, we look forward to seeing you next Saturday. So stay tuned for that. So, Ed, thank you for another great tour of the museum on today. And thank you guys for making time to come back out and be part of this. And thank you, viewer, for watching and getting your Helping Seniors car raffle tickets. On behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, Kim Bernard, and our whole team, uh, we're going to do like AJ says at the end of all, of all those things. One, two, three. Thank you.